It is Monday evening, it's about to get dark right quick. I've just hit the day before the sun disappears, and by sun I mean overcast, gray, nondescript Seattle sky. Last week I covered how even though I still cannot stand working out, I figured out how to do it on a regular basis, like a lot. I work out a lot, you guys. That's still so weird. Even though I am that girl now, I'm still not that girl. It's so weird. In that video I talked about how this week I would tell you some of the tips and tricks that I figured out to satiate my ever snacking tendencies. My mind is a one trick pony. If I am thinking that I want to eat something, I can think nothing else. I cannot do anything else until I eat that thing. So we're going to go to the store. I'm going to set myself up for success for the week. I'm not showing my full meals. I'm just going to show you the things that I use to get me by when the going gets tough and I want to blow my diet entirely. And then throughout the week, as I feel tempted by all of the snacks that are around in this like fall harvest Halloween -y season, I'll show you how I use everything I bought to get myself by. So first, we shop. You can get most of these things at any traditional grocery store, but you know me, I love a Trader Joe's, and if I can use an opportunity to go there so I can talk to the lady about my chickens, because I have a Trader Joe's chicken lady, then that's where I'm gonna go. They've got the small town feel that I like to bubble wrap myself up in. So let's go shopping. And why, yes, I am wearing Bordeaux velvet corduroy plush overalls with bronze detail. Mod cloth, by the way. So while we're driving, let's talk about some of the things that are hard points for me. One, it's hard for me to stop eating past my food cutoff time. I am an intermittent faster. I try and stop eating past 8 p.m. on most days, and it's really, really hard, especially if I find a really good, dumb, trash TV show to watch on Netflix. I want to eat some trash food, and my mind, it, I just can't get myself off of it. So I've figured out a way to trick myself around that. A lot of the ideas that I'm going to show you are probably not things you've never heard of before, but they are what worked for me, and it's good to hear when something actually works for somebody, you know? Also, I know a lot of people out there don't like to drink their calories. I'm completely the opposite. I am completely a sucker for holding something delicious in a Starbucks cup, and so many of those Starbucks drinks are loaded with calories, so I needed to find something I could still have that wasn't going to be loaded with sugar. I basically try and eat clean, kind of a paleo diet. I do allow myself some processed things, but I try try not to, I try and avoid them as much as I can. And for me, it can be really time intensive to find non-processed foods that have that full, robust flavor that you could get at, like, at a restaurant meal. So today, I will cover those three things. Late night munchies, sweet tooth and like Starbucks-y style drink treats, and an easy to make, good flavor profile, I don't know what to call this one, appetite satiator? <laughs> sure. Maybe what I'm doing will spark something in you and it's totally different and then you can share it in the comments and it'll help somebody else. And we'll just keep the whole ball rolling. I just turned the cup of happy into a ball pit in my mind. I do picture you guys in an actual cup. And right now it's a ball pit, that's fun. We're gonna call this my don't blow it emergency kit. And as the week goes on, if I think of other tips, I'll throw them in there. But I'm specifically going shopping today for those three things. I'm already going off plan, but I love it when they do these for fall. Don't worry if you're not a Brussels sprout fan. This is just an extra. You want to choose one that's pretty uniformly shaped with the most amount of fatness in the middle, you know what I mean? This guy wouldn't cut it. And this guy's middle bit is okay, but that end piece is just wasted. Part of us not doing processed items is we are also doing full fat things. You do you though. Okay, we're done. We got one bag, just a couple of items. I was in there like 10 minutes. Can you tell how much darker it got? And all of these items together cost a total of $14.74. And only the one impulse purchase. All right. I'll see you when the going gets tough. Halloween dinner. Aren't they cute? This is haunting me right now. It is the family stash of Halloween candy since Halloween was yesterday, and I want it. But I'm not gonna have it. Instead, I'm gonna go trick or treat for myself. Let's go. Ooh, so pretty out. Look at that sky. That's a Halloweeny sky. Hi there, we're gonna get started for you today. Hi, can I get two venti triple shot espressos over ice? Nothing else in the cup. Alrighty, 
type that in real quick. Alrighty, 582 is going to be your total at the window. Thank you. The Starbucks girl is flirting with the car in front of me. There's a lot of giggling going on. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You have a great rest of your night. You too. Okay, here's my trick. Now this is still a treat. It's gonna be a high fat but low sugar treat for me. I, my trick or treat, I just realized I said that. We get these at Costco. This is light muscle milk is the nutrition facts if you're interested in seeing that. Zero sugars in it and for my treat, that's what I'm aiming for. I'm gonna let it have fat without worrying about the sugar. So. Three shots of espresso over ice in a venti cup, $2 and some change. Then I pour about half of this in there. I'm just gonna eyeball it. That's about half. Ryan will have the other half. We always get two and split them. So even though there is extra cost because I'm using this, one of these makes two of these. And then you're gonna top it with the milk or cream of your choice. I'm going with half and half because <laughs> it's supposed to be a treat, so. And then watch it be beautiful as it blends. Yum. Ryan just did his. They're so pretty, it's so satisfying to make. We love these, don't we, Ryan? Yeah, these are delicious. It doesn't taste like diet food. It tastes like a frappuccino without it being super blended. It has that same sort of flavor. So yummy. When Ryan first tried it for the first time, he danced. <laughs> he did. I did. That's how good it is. I'm super sensitive to the taste of fake sugars like stevia and stuff. I just don't like them and I love this. For a low sugar treat, I think it's super worth it. Sadie's saying cheese and please in the background. Can you tell the difference between the two? That was please, the first one was cheese. And that was this. Mom speak. This is what she just handed me. This is a venti Starbucks drink. Most of their drinks are going to be several hundred calories. These uh, individual servings are 100 calories a piece, so I only use half of that, that's 50 calories. And then a shot of half and half is going to be highly caloric, but still, even with that being over 100 calories of half and half, probably more like 120. And then the very low calorie espresso, I still have an under 300 calorie entire venti drink. I'm pretty sure some of their treat drinks can be over a thousand calories, so I say that's not bad. Plus, I don't usually finish them. I'm a slow sipper. Unlike Ryan, who downs it as soon as he gets it. Oh, he got a bunny. It's 7.30, I haven't had dinner, I'm starving, and all I want, more than anything on the planet, if I could have anything, including the most decadent, divine, inspired meals, all I want is a McDonald's Big Mac. And I haven't had a McDonald's Big Mac in maybe years. But right now it's all I want. I want it real bad. So this is me turning to my savory meal. And I have a feeling it's not gonna be enough, so I'm probably gonna go to my snacky item after that too. Let's see if it works. I give it my best shot. Do you guys ever crave manufactured things? Like there was one time where all I could crave in the whole world was manufactured orange. I wanted Kraft Mac and Cheese, I wanted Cheeto Puff Balls, I wanted Cheez-Its. That very distinct, very unnatural orange. I was looking for where the stuff that I bought was. It's still in the back. I didn't unpack it. First we have, this is all the stuff that would be on an everything bagel, except for the bagel. I don't think I needed to explain that, it's in the title. Our sweet potato or yam for those of you that wanna come at me. Yes, I'm making sweet potato toast. It's really big on Pinterest right now. There's a lot of different ways you can top it. This is what I do to keep it simple. I think I also have a lime, so I might squirt a little of that on there, but I'm just gonna show you how I do it. Maybe you haven't tried it yourself yet, and I wanna show you how easy it is. Brian's cooking other delicious things in the background. So first, we want to chop our sweet potato into bread-sized slices, or toast-sized slices. That's why you want one that's kinda uniform. You can do this with the white sweet potatoes or proper sweet potatoes as well, but I think this has much better flavor and isn't as fibrous when you're eating it. Okay, there's my three slices. The rest of the sweet potato can go into the fridge wrapped up for tomorrow to do this again. I cut the tip off, it's a little discolored. It was ooky looking to me, even though it's probably fine. And I want it to fit in my toaster. So you don't have to do anything to them, no prep, just slice them up. Drop them in the toaster. Turn your toaster all the way up and give it a go. These guys just popped up, but I wanna have them go another round. 
and it's okay if the ends get a little dark if you ask me. I like them that way. Okay, after two rounds, my thinner piece is ready to come out. That's the charring that I was talking about that I like. So it's not going to get crisp, but it's also not going to get mushy like a sweet potato would. It gives it like a still fresh bite to it while not having it be a raw sweet potato. That's not a very good descriptor, but you should really try it. Even if you're not a huge sweet potato fan, I'm not, but I like this. It's more about the texture than it is about the actual sweet potato. Everything you top it with is the actual feature of what you're gonna be eating. And then I'm going to shake my everything bagel seasoning on there. And then, because it always makes everything better, a dash of sriracha. I don't eat it with a fork and knife. I think part of the fun of it is making it hand food, but it's not the kind of hand food you wanna eat with somebody looking at you. So obviously this wouldn't be a whole meal. Like I would also pair it with something like Brussels sprouts or something like that. But I am just trying to get my hankering for my Big Mac out of the way. And I will say this smells so good. It is the culmination of its parts. It doesn't smell like the individual pieces. It has a really great smell to it. So I'm getting hungry and excited for it. Fold it, I've got some avocado in there, and bite. Mmm. Yeah, that's gonna do it for me. It's really good. So if you don't like avocado, you can top it with egg. If you don't have the everything but the bagel seasoning, you can make up your own stuff. There's so many different things you can pile these high with, including like goat cheese and berries and look on Pinterest, it's all over the place. I've tried a few of them, but this is my favorite. And if I had extra time, I would do like an over easy egg with it, but I really wanted to show you the most simple thing that I make and how easy is it to just stick something in a toaster and slice up some avocado and you're done. I think going thinner on the slices are a little better. And like I said, I like that little bit of char on mine. It's super tasty. This is gonna do it for me. I think I win. I feel like I have some sort of like foggy filter on the side, I don't know what's going on. But here is a little unplanned tip that I'll shove in the middle of this video. I think Brussels sprouts are delicious. These are roasted crispy garlic Brussels sprouts and I can eat them in large quantities. They're gonna be low calorie and good for me and they make my belly full, whereas a lot of veggies don't. So. If you find something healthy that you like, they don't just have to be a side. Eat them for an entire meal. I do it all the time. If you don't love Brussels sprouts, find a healthy thing you do love and rethink how you eat it. It doesn't have to be a side dish. It's 2 a.m. I just folded laundry. I'm watching New Girl and I am starving. Lolo, I'm hungry. I should be asleep and I should be in the middle of fasting, but I want to know what's going to happen on the next episode. I'm going to watch one more and I'm hungry. So I'm going to make my midnight snack. First, let's admire the art. Look, there's Lulu. Scarlett, her drawing is like animation style. Like she kind of looks like she could be an animator for the Powerpuff Girls or something. She found a feather and turned it into the mane and tail of these unicorns. And when I asked why the unicorns were sad, which I'm sure you are asking to yourselves right now, she said, because they're in a sandstorm. Look, there's my mom and baby Luca. And there's winking Luca and Ryan. Okay. We are going in for the good old classic kale chips. Yes, we are. But I'm gonna show you how to make them and I promise you they're real yummy, so stick with me. Okay, I get this chopped kale from Trader Joe's. I really like this super ruffly kind for kale chips. Spread them out on a baking sheet. This is gonna cook down a little bit, but try and give each leaf a little bit of its own dance space, like in Dirty Dancing. You want the heat to be able to dry them all out. Next, I pick out any giant hunks of stalk that are in there like this and just rip off the stalk bit. Keep the leaves, give the stalk bit to your bunnies. I don't know why it's so shiny. I just tried to wipe this and look, I wiped the A out of Samsung. Look at the S is disappearing too. What kind of craftsman? Anyway, okay, bake 350. Start. Use a large baking pan, bigger than mine if you have it. You really want everything to be a single layer. I don't have enough space, so I'm just gonna kinda wing it. Use your favorite spray oil and just give everything a good coating. That'll do ya. And then this is where the nutritional yeast is gonna come into play. I know it does not sound delicious. It does not have a delicious name, but it is delicious. It's like a cheesy chip topping flavor. So we wanted that good coating of oil so that this will stick. Whoa, a little heavy handed there, lighten up Marie. I'm gonna watch what I'm actually doing rather than watching through the viewfinder. And just coat all of your greens. I like them nice and cheesy. That's pretty good. 
I usually use a finer grain salt because these are so delicate, but this worked okay. This part's the easy bit, but to make them perfect, you have to have good timing. You wanna make sure that you have just enough time to dry them out so they're super crispy and that satisfying crunch, but not get brown, because they will not have good flavor. I'm gonna start by putting them in for six minutes. Seriously, if you've never tried kale chips, they are so easy. You need to try it. They're yummier than you think they are. Kale chips do not smell fantastic while they're cooking, but you just have to trust the process. After six minutes, I'm gonna kinda ruffle them around, give them their own space, and put them back in for another six minutes, and then they'll be done. You're on laundry, but I'm gonna give you a taste test as I finish this episode. It's what it looks like when it's done. It's crispy, and it totally satisfies that like Dorito slash popcorn munchies kinda thing. Mm, so yummy. It's such a good crunch. It's got really good flavor. Now I can mindlessly eat this and not really worry about the calories or anything as I watch my big dumb show. We look beautiful, Lou. All right, you guys, that wraps it up for this video. If you have any snack hacks, leave them in the comments for me. Somebody out there who paid super close attention noticed that I never used the zucchini. I will show you how I make my zucchini chips on Instagram, so follow me there. The link will be below. I thought this video was gonna be simple and it ended up being something that spanned over two weeks. So for the effort put in and that I finally got it up, hit the thumbs up for me, please. Thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notifications. I'll see you next time.